Hey, welcome to the CO2 Director project where we are going to assemble the parts. Um, let's see if I can get some of these. I don't like the little recording things that pop up, but hopefully they can stay out of my way. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is go to your assembly tab and you're going to need to insert your, your dragster body. So that's going to be hitting insert. I assume you're in the document where you created it. If not, you have to go to other docs. You maybe have to hit the home and kind of go navigate to your document. Um, I will give you a warning that when you find that document, let me just, um, that you may not see a part studio until you hit this create version. If you've never created a version, right? Or if there's been updates, um, you're not going to see the part studio. So you will have to do that. Um, and then it'll ask you what you want to name it. You can stick with the version one, version two, automatic names that it gives it for in here. But you will have to be able to go reference parts if you have things in other documents than the one you're currently working in. For me, I have everything in my current document, just in different part studios. So I find the um, dragster part that I want to bring in, which was this CO23. If I expand that, I, if there are multiple parts in a part studio, Right, you want to click the individual parts you want versus bringing on the entire part studio where you grab everything. So I could bring on that part. I just bring it over. I'm going to left click to place it, which I've already done. Um, so I'm going to hit the red X. Now, after bringing in the first piece, it's going to be free to move around. If I click and drag, it moves. And that's not what I want. I want this thing to be anchored to, um, you know, somewhere, just space that it won't drag and move. Um, ideally, it's nice to have your piece um, also near the origin. So if I click on it, I get the triad. I'm going to bring the little base to a corner. And then once I've got that, I'm going to right click on that base of the triad. And I'm going to say move to origin. It'll kind of drag my body so that that relative point is now at the origin. And then I'm going to right click and fix. This piece can no longer move. It can't rotate. If I try to drag it, I get the fix symbol. Okay. All right. So now let's insert from a different part studio. I have all my parts <laughs> and um, I have the ultimate axle bushing from Pitsco that we reverse engineered. We are going to put four of these inside my document <clears throat> and I'm going to use a fastened mate. When this is pushed into that hole, it's a it's not a super tight fit, but it's a tight enough fit that this thing doesn't spin freely. It's pretty much in place. Okay. So if we want to remove all degrees of freedom, when we put a, a connection in, so the part can't move, rotate, twist, anything, uh, we'll use a fast mate. It removes all degrees of freedom. All right. So for my mate connectors, I'm going to use the center mark of that hole right there on the face. And for my mate connector of the bushing, I'm going to use um, the inside face of the flange. Okay, this flange is going to make a contact with the outside face of my body. So this is the plane I want to be on. And you can see the mate connector is going to the center. So I'm really getting a point and a plane at the same time. I'm going to zoom out and take a peek. Now, I didn't know which way to flip that plane. And so I can see that it's got it in the opposite orientation that I want. I simply hit these arrows that stay, say flip primary axis, and there you go. All right, so now the boring part, just repeat that four times. It would be nice if I didn't have to flip the connection every time, but it seems like every time it is wrong. All right, next up, I'm going to insert for us, we have a washer that we were going to put um, outside the bushing and that'll sit between the bushing and the wheel. Now, in real life, this is not needed. If you don't want to use the washer, that is your choice when you make your real dragster. But just to show where the washer would go, we are bringing the washer on. Now, this washer is when it when it when the axle slid through it, it is not fixed. 
it's generally held into place by the axle, but it's got some freedom to spin. And so the mate that will allow it to still the freedom to spin is called a Revolute mate. Now I know you're not gonna really see it spinning. There's no detail to kind of no, notice that, it, that it's spinning, but um, we still wanna use the correct types of mates. So I'm turning on a Revolute mate, and then basically I'm getting the same type of mate connectors I just got on this outer face of the bushing, that plane, and then a plane of the washer. Now, it kind of looks like a pineapple to me sometimes when the axis is flipped the wrong direction. And so the washer is getting pulled into the bushing. You just, again, flip the primary axis. And so just repeat now four times. Washer, there you go. All right, from there, we are going to bring on the axle. Now this one, I need to do um, a little calculating, a little checking first. There is the ability to get a center mark or sorry, a mate connector kind of at the center of that hole and the one in the center and that centers it up, but we also trying to teach you some different skills. And sometimes it's hard and awkward to get the angle just right where you can get in there and get that, okay? So what we are gonna do instead is use a quick little formula. We're gonna first ask on shape to measure, which I probably need to move this up a little bit, sorry. I clicked on the outside face of the washer on one side, I'm gonna click on the opposite washer on the other side. And on shape is going to give me a distance. That's 1.683. Now I'm going to jot that down on the sheet of paper just to make sure I don't forget, but hopefully you can remember that 1.683. I am in inches, maybe you're in millimeters. Okay. I then need to know the distance of my axle. I'm going to click on the two ends of the axle and I get a center distance of 2.756. And if I hover over where on chip's given that to me, you notice that it even highlights a dashed line to show me what it's measuring. So what is that going to do for me? Well, let me show you. We're going to turn on the Revolute Mate. I'm going to get the end of the axle and mate it with this outside face of the washer. Those two mate connectors become flush or in the same place. And then all of the extra distance of the axle hangs out on one side, right? The axle is longer. And so this amount of axle that you see exposed is the difference between the axle distance and the distance I measured between the washers. Well, what I would like is that difference to have half of it slide out over here and the other half to stay here, okay? So to do that, we're gonna use this offset tool. And right here, I can see the z-axis of the one that's kind of sliding along the axis of the axle. And so I'm going to do a little subtraction problem. 7.56 minus 1.683, right there in the formula. Now, if I do that, that is the difference um, between those two things, which is this distance, and that is how much it should move. And it moved that amount. The problem is I lost all of my extra here, and now all the extra is on that side. So I didn't want to do that. I wanted to move it half of the extra. So, hey, it's kind of nice. It went ahead and put this in parentheses for me when I hit enter. And so I otherwise I would need to add parentheses to make sure order of operations is, is um, working for me to give me the correct value I want. So I want this difference then divided by two. So I'm going to add a forward slash two. So divide by two and hit enter. And you'll see that now it is centered. If yours for some reason goes in the wrong direction, try adding a minus sign in front and that should fix it up, okay? So for me, I didn't need that, it's now wrong, but if yours goes the wrong way, just add the minus. So you're gonna repeat that on both sides. Now this axle should be the exact same distance. However, I don't know if my washers on the back for some reason are a different distance apart. So they are a little bit. So I have 1.858 as the distance between them at the rear based on what I did modeling my car. So I'm gonna turn on a Revolute Mate again, not a Fasten Mate, a Revolute Mate. I'm gonna 
get the end of the axle with this outer face of the washer. And then I'm going to offset. And I'm going to get this distance of 2.756 minus 1.858. Great. Hitting enter, you see that it, it totally moved it from one side to the other, which is not what I wanted. And so we add after the parentheses the divide by 2, and we should get exactly half the movement. There we go. So we are almost done. Next up, we're going to bring on our wheels. I've got a couple different wheels here for my front. I'm going to bring on, let's see, the Pitsco LX front wheel. And then the matching uh, Pitsco PX. So the back one is called the PX, and the front one is called the LX. So there you go. Now... To place these wheels on the axles in real life, it is a tight fit. So the axle and the wheel are kind of stuck relative to each other. If the wheel spins, the axle spins, or vice versa. So I don't want to use a Revolute Mate. I do want the tires to spin. I just know in real life, they don't spin freely. They, they spin as a unit with the axle. So when one wheel spins, the other wheel on the opposite is spinning too. Um, they're not independent. So we're going to use a Fasten Mate. I'm going to use the end of the um, axle. Now I'm going to rotate around so I can see into the hole of this wheel. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the bottom of that wheel. That hole. I'm going to look at if it went the correct direction, and it did. Otherwise, I would hit, have to hit this flip primary axis. From there, I'm going to rotate around so I can see it from the front or back and see, you know, based on how deep that hole is, what is it doing. And I might choose an offset. I can't put it on any further than the bottom of the hole. I'd get an interference. But... If for some reason trying to push it on all the way, it was making contact with the washer, I'd have to pull it out a little bit, right? So um, just to simulate that, what if I add my point four? Oop, that was the wrong axis. Okay, ooh, that was way too much. But there you go. In real life, the wheel can't go into the washer, which it's doing right now. So I would have to manually provide that offset, okay? Um, and here, putting it on further suggests that I'm actually able to go further than the bottom of the hole. So I shouldn't really be using an offset in my case. Your case would be to back it up. I'm going to accept that, and I'm going to repeat with the other front wheel. So now I know I don't really expect... Oh, my, my fastening was... Menu was turned off. As you're orbiting around, remember that where you put your cursor is where it will zoom. Also helps control where you orbit. So getting good at moving your mouse to a different location on your screen before you zoom with your wheel or fingers will help it go where you want. All right, so that one looks good. I'm going to accept that. And then I'm going to repeat with the back wheels. Oh, that one did not go in the way I want, so I'm going to flip primary axis. And now I can see that the plastic tab is going into the washer and the bushing, and that's not okay. So I'm going to use my offset. It is the z-axis to pull it out. And let's just try point 0.2 and see which way it goes. Positive went the wrong way, so let's try a negative point 0.2. And there you go. I get a teeny little gap. Um, if I can try a negative point 0.1, it won't pull out quite as much, but that's not far enough. So negative point 0.15. And that looks like there's actually a little gap. So that works. I should probably need the same value on the opposite side. So let's see. End of the axle. Bottom of that hole in there. It did not go the way I want. Flip primary axis and offset again. Let's try the same negative 0.15. It did go the correct direction of the negative, and I have my little teeny gap. Boom. There you go. So there is an assembly. I know I don't have the eyelets, but I have my car. I've got the wheels on it. Now here is a pretty cool thing. So because I use the correct Revolute Mates and stuff, I should be able to spin. Let me kind of turn this so you can get a glimpse of those um, holes on the other wheel. If I grab this wheel and move it, see how when I spin this wheel, the other wheel spins as well they are both fastened to the axle. So really what's moving is the axle, 
the wheels are going with it. Where I'm moving this wheel, the axle has to spin, right? Same thing. Um, same thing should be true of the front. I don't know if I can get it at an angle. There you go. An angle, you can see both wheels, and they should be moving as a set. And that's how it is in real life. Okay. So I can come over here and find these Revolut mates. If you want to remember what got mated, you can double click and take a peek. Hopefully, you're naming your part so it's not part one, part two, but this is the bushing and the brass washer. Um, and that's not the one I expect. I'd really expect it to be the axle, but let's see, that's probably right. Washer, 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 washer. You can rename these. And then this is probably my axle and there you go. Axle and brush washer. But I don't know that this is the way it's truly going to work. This is the one that should work, but I think it's going to be the other one. I'm going to right click and choose animate for the axle. And then I'm going to hit play and see if I see anything. And I don't. So right now the axle spinning, um, but it, it, at least it should be. Um, but maybe it's spinning the washer and not the axle. So we're going to go back to, um, let's see, I don't know if there's a front wheel or back wheel. Let's see what's highlighting this Revolut one. There, it's a back wheel. So I'm going to go to one of these first Revolutes and I'm going to choose animate. And let's hit play and see what happens. Oh, nothing there. Oh, there you go. Oh, did it spin on the front one? That first time it didn't, did it? Yeah, that's uh, definitely interesting because the second Revolute and the first Revolute are the same type of Revolute, the same parts. Um, anyway, it's not always clear the way Onshape's um, doing that, but because what I'm really trying to get to spin is the axle. But when I animate this connection between the washer and the bushing, it makes the wheel spin. So I feel like it should be a different one, but anyway, this is kind of cool. Oh, cancel. I didn't hit animate. I just opened the menu. All right, so this is kind of a fun thing. If you have an assembly where there's a lot of connections and, and relationships, that when one piece moves, other pieces move, it's nice to be able to turn on that animation and let others see it. Inside the animation menu, you can have it on reciprocate where it will go one way and then hit a stop and go the other way. So right now we've got it at starting at zero and ending at 360. So once it makes one full circle, it starts to go backwards. We can change that. Um, instead of having to put, you know, some large number to get it to keep spinning, you can change where it says playback type reciprocate. And we can put this on loop and hit play. Let's see if it's going forward or backwards. If it's going the wrong way, you can hit the reverse button. For us, it was going the correct way. Now, in terms of speed, you have a number of steps. It will appear to you to be visually faster if you decrease the number of steps. So if I go to say 50 and hit enter, it kind of stops and I'm gonna have to restart it, but it goes much, much quicker. And you can maybe go even smaller. So as that number gets smaller, it goes faster. And that is at just the right frequency, kind of the right speed that it actually appears to be going backwards. Let me try something a little faster yet. Let's see if it, because I didn't reverse it. Oh, that's interesting. Now it's not even showing me those. It's, I can only tell from the middle. Well, in that eight steps, there are eight exact holes. So I think that's why you can't see it. Um, so let's go smaller than eight. A um, little bit of a visual trick as it produces the steps, though. You, you see this in real life sometimes, but this appears to be going backwards and the other forward. So playing a little trick on your eyes, but it is indeed going forward. So there you go. There is a working assembly where your wheels are free to spin. Now, if your wheels don't spin, one of the big reasons, most of the time, uh, I'll break it. I'll say there's two big reasons. Okay, Number one is somebody did not fix the body. So if they didn't fix the body, they go to grab the wheel and the whole thing moves. So instead of letting the wheel spin, you just move the assembly around. All right, so that's one. So fixing the body will fix that problem. The second problem is we look at your mates and we notice that every single mate is a fastened mate 
and they didn't adhere to um, the type of mates that we wanted to create. They just went fast and fast and fast and all the way down. So um, if I recap those one last time before I sign off, Oop, that's not what I was trying to do. I'm trying to hide. There you go. All right. So the bushing gets fastened to the body. The washer is revolute mated to the bushing because it does have freedom spin. The axle is revolute mated. And I used the washer as a reference on the outside and did the offset. So that's revolute. And then the wheel to the axle was fastened. So I started with a the fastened, then I did a couple revolutes, and then I finished with a fastened, if you think of kind of putting one wheel on. Okay, I hope that helps you get your assembly done.